Hi everyone. Viking ships were marine vessels of unique structure, used in Scandinavia from the Viking Age throughout the Middle Ages. The boat types were quite varied, depending on what the ship was intended for, but they were generally characterized as being slender and flexible boats, with symmetrical ends with true keel. They were clinker built, which is the overlapping of planks riveted together. Some might have had a dragon's head or other circular object protruding from the bow and stern for design, although this is only inferred from historical sources. Viking ships were used both for military purposes and for long distance trade, exploration, and colonization. In the literature, Viking ships are usually seen divided into two broad categories merchant ships and warships, the latter resembling narrow war canoes with less load capacity, but higher speed. However, these categories are overlapping, some transport ships would also form part of war fleets. As a rule, ship lanes in Scandinavia followed coastal waters, hence a majority of vessels were of a lighter design, while a few types, such as the Nar, could navigate the open ocean. The Viking ships ranged from the Baltic Sea to far from the Scandinavian homelands, to Iceland, the Faroe Islands, Greenland, Newfoundland, the Mediterranean, the Black Sea and Africa. One particular advantage of the Viking ship is the comparatively low weight, making land transport and portage routine, as in crossing Jutland instead of rounding Skagen to enter or exit the Baltic Sea, and travel on the river networks of Eastern Europe. Development The ship has been functioning as the centerpiece of Scandinavian culture for millennia, serving both pragmatic and religious purposes, and its importance was already deeply rooted in the Scandinavian culture when the Viking Age began. Scandinavia is a region with relatively high inland mountain ranges, dense forests and easy access to the sea with many natural ports. Consequently, trade routes were primarily operated via shipping, as inland travel was both more hazardous and cumbersome. Many stone engravings from the Nordic Stone Age and in particular the Nordic Bronze Age, depict ships in various situations and valuable ships were sacrificed as part of ceremonial votive offerings since at least the Nordic Iron Age, as evidenced by the Yachtspring and Nidham boats. Vikings had a settlement in North America exactly 1,000 years ago, centuries before Christopher Columbus arrived in the Americas, a study says. Scientists say a new dating technique analyzing tree rings has provided evidence that Vikings occupied a site in Newfoundland, Canada, in 1021 AD. It has long been known that Europeans reached the Americas before Columbus's arrival in the New World in 1492. But this is the first time researchers have suggested an exact date. Writing in the journal Nature, scientists said they had analyzed the tree rings of three pieces of wood cut for the Norse settlement at Lanser Meadows. They said that using an atmospheric radiocarbon signal produced by a dated solar storm as a reference, they were able to pin the exact felling year of the tree to 1021. Drakkar. The city seal of Bergen depicts a Viking longship, a Drakkar. Drakkar, or Trachea Dragon, are the type of ship, of 30 rowing benches and upwards that are only known from historical sources, such as the 13th century Gong Urolf's saga. Here, the ships are described as most unusual, elegant, ornately decorated, and used by those who went raiding and plundering. These ships were likely skates that differed only in the carvings of menacing beasts, such as dragons and snakes, carried on the prow of the ship. The earliest mentioned Drakkar was the ship of unstated size owned by Harold Fairhair in the 10th century. The first Drakkar ship whose size was mentioned in the source was Olaf Tryggvason's 30 room Tranin, built at Nidaros circa 995. By far the most famous in this period was his later ship the Ormran Langi, Long Serpent, of 34 rooms, built over the winter of 999 to 1000. No true dragon ship, as described in the sagas, has been found by archaeological excavation. The city seal of Bergen, Norway, created in 1299, depicts a ship with a dragon's head at either end, which might be intended to represent a Drakkar ship. Fairing. A fairing is an open rowboat with two pairs of oars, commonly found in most boat building traditions in western and northern Scandinavia, dating back to the Viking Age. 
Forerunners of the furring boat type were found both in the Gokstad and the Tune ship burials. As with the Viking ships, such auxiliary vessels are built so light that the full complement of rowers is sufficient to transport the boat over land. Nar. Nar is the Norse term for ships that were built for cargo transport. A length of about 54 feet and a beam of 15 feet are not untypical, and the hull could be capable of carrying up to 24 tons. Overall displacement, 50 tons. This is shorter than the Gokstad type of longships, but nares are sturdier by design and they depended mostly on sail power, only putting oars to use as auxiliaries if there was no wind on the open water. Because of this, the NAR was used for longer voyages, ocean-going transports and more hazardous trips than the Gokstad type. It was capable of sailing 75 miles in one day, and held a crew of about 20 to 30. Nairs routinely crossed the North Atlantic in the Viking Age, carrying livestock and goods to and from Greenland and the North Atlantic Islands. The design of the Nar later influenced the design of the COG, used in the Baltic Sea by the Hanseatic League. Examples of Viking Age Nar are Skaldalive, which was excavated in Denmark in 1962 and is believed to be from about 1030 AD, and the Askekar ship which was found in Sweden in 1933 and is believed to be from about 930 AD. Longship. Longships were naval vessels made and used by the Vikings from Scandinavia and Iceland for trade, commerce, exploration, and warfare during the Viking Age. The longship's design evolved over many years, as seen in the Nidham and Gvalsun ships. The character and appearance of these ships have been reflected in Scandinavian boat-building traditions until today. The average speed of Viking ships varied from ship to ship but lay in the range of 5 to 10 knots, and the maximum speed of a longship under favorable conditions was around 15 knots. The longship is characterized as a graceful, long, narrow, light, wooden boat with a shallow draft hull designed for speed. The ship's shallow draft allowed navigation in waters only one meter deep and permitted beach landings, while its light weight enabled it to be carried over portages. Longships were also double-ended, the symmetrical bow and stern allowing the ship to reverse direction quickly without having to turn around. Longships were fitted with oars along almost the entire length of the boat itself. Later versions sported a rectangular sail on a single mast which was used to replace or augment the effort of the rowers, particularly during long journeys. Longships can be classified into a number of different types, depending on size, construction details, and prestige. The most common way to classify longships is by the number of rowing positions on board. Types ranged from the Carvey, with 13 rowing benches, to the Busa, one of which has been found with an estimated 34 rowing positions. Longships were the epitome of Scandinavian naval power at the time and were highly valued possessions. They were owned by coastal farmers and assembled by the king to form the Lydang in times of conflict, in order to have a powerful naval force at his disposal. While longships were deployed by the Norse in warfare, there are no descriptions of naval tactics such as ramming, etc. Instead, the ships would sometimes be lashed together in battle to form a steady platform for infantry warfare. Longships were called dragon ships by the Franks because they had a dragon-shaped prow. Carve. The Carve was a small type of Viking longship, with a broad hull somewhat similar to the Nar. They were used for both war and ordinary transport, carrying people, cargo or livestock. Because they were able to navigate in very shallow water, they were also used for coasting. Halves typically had broad beams of approximately 17 feet. The Viking Age saw the first local developments of trading ports into forts and coastal towns, all of which were deeply dependent on the North Sea and the Baltic Sea for survival and growth. Control of the waterways was of great economical and political importance, and consequently, ships were in high demand. Because of their overwhelming importance, ships became a mainstay of the Viking religion, as they evolved into symbols of power and prowess. The Hedeby coins, among the earliest known Danish currency, have impressions of ships as emblems, showing the importance of naval vessels in the area. Through such cultural and practical significance, the Viking ship progressed into the most powerful, advanced naval vessel in Viking Age Europe. 
ship construction. Viking ships varied from other contemporary ships, being generally more seaworthy and lighter. This was achieved through use of clinker construction. The planks on Viking vessels were arrived from large, old growth trees, especially oak. A ship's hull could be as thin as one inch, as a rived plank is stronger than a sword plank found in later craft, resulting in a strong yet supple hull. Working up from a stout oaken keel and ribs, the shipwrights would rivet on the planks using wrought iron rivets and roves, reinforced with added support ribs and thwarts. Each tier of planks overlapped the one below, and the corking of tarred cow's hair was used between planks to create a waterproof hull. Remarkably large vessels could be constructed using traditional clinker construction. Dragon ships carrying 100 warriors were not uncommon. Furthermore, during the early Viking Age, all ports replaced rollocks, allowing oars to be stored while the ship was at sail and to provide better angles for rowing. The largest ships of the era could travel 5 to 6 knots using oar power and up to 10 knots under sail. Navigation with such technological improvements, the Vikings began to make more and more ocean voyages, as their ships were more seaworthy. However, in order to sail in ocean waters, the Vikings needed to develop methods of relatively precise navigation. Most commonly, a ship's pilot drew on traditional knowledge to set the ship's course. Essentially, the Vikings simply used prior familiarity with tides, sailing times, and landmarks in order to route courses. For example, scholars contend that the sighting of a whale allowed the Vikings to determine the direction of a ship. Because whales feed in highly nutritious waters, commonly found in regions where land masses have pushed deep water currents towards shallower areas, the sighting of a whale functioned as a signal that land was near. On the other hand, some academics have proposed that the Vikings also developed more advanced aids to navigation, such as the use of a sun compass. A wooden half-disc found on the shores of Nassau Swark, Greenland initially seemed to support this hypothesis. However, further investigation of the object revealed that the slits inscribed in the disc are disproportionately spaced, and so the object could not in fact function as an accurate compass. Rather it has been suggested that the instrument is instead a confession disc used by priests to count the number of confessions in their parish. Similarly, Researchers and historians continually debate the use of the sunstone in Viking navigation. Because a sunstone is able to polarize light, it is a plausible method for determining direction. By showing which direction light waves are oscillating, the sunstone has the potential to show the sun's position even when the sun is obscured by clouds. The stone changes to a certain color, based on the direction of the waves but only when the object is held in an area with direct sunlight. Thus, most scholars debate the reliability and the plausibility of using a navigational tool that can only determine direction in such limited conditions. Replicas. Viking ship replicas are one of the more common types of ship replica. Viking, the very first Viking ship replica, was built by the Rodsvoven shipyard in Sandefjord, Norway. In 1893 it sailed across the Atlantic Ocean to Chicago for the World's Columbian Exposition. There are a considerable number of modern reconstructions of Viking Age ships in service around Northern Europe and North America. The Viking Ship Museum in Roskiller, Denmark, has been particularly prolific in building accurate reconstructions of archaeological finds in its collection. Thanks for watching.